My name is Natasha and I'm the Director of Operations here at SwipeSum. Today we're going to look at how to use the Authorize.net Payment Gateway. First we're going to begin with setting up your account, then we're going to move through the different tools the Gateway offers, then I will show you how to look at the reporting options, and finally we'll look at how to see past transactions. First let's start with the Account tab. Once you've received your login credentials, you will log in to your Authorize.net Gateway with your username and password. With Authorize.net, there are a few different options and in, in ways to implement this gateway. You may be implementing it on your website or just using it as a freestanding virtual terminal. When logging into your account, you're going to want to set up other users to be able to access the gateway with other logins. To do this, you'll navigate to the account tab on the top right hand section of your screen. On the left hand menu, you will click on user administration. Here is where you will be able to see a list of users that currently have access to the account and be able to add, edit, and delete users. In order to add a user, click on this link. Here is where you will be able to select what type of role this user will have. Account Administrator, Transaction Manager, Account Analyst, or Account Contact. These user roles will have various permissions that you will be able to set up as you keep going through the menu options. Feel free to contact Swipesum if you have any questions about creating the user permissions. Next, I'm going to walk you through the various processing tools that Authorize.net offers. The first tool is the virtual terminal. In this section, you are going to be able to charge a credit card, refund a credit card, charge a bank account, or even refund a bank account. To get to this section, you will click on Tools, the second menu option. On the left-hand side, you will make sure your cursor is over Virtual Terminal. It automatically goes to the Charge a Credit Card option, which you will use most often. Here you will enter the various payment information as credit card number, expiration date, amount, which are required to make a sale. You can also enter in order information, customer billing information, shipping information, and additional information if necessary. In order to qualify for a level two or level three interchange discounts, you will wanna enter in the additional information fields that are located at the bottom of the screen. By clicking Submit, you will send that credit card charge for settlement. This next tool is Recurring Billing. This is where you will be able to set up subscriptions so that your customers can be charged on a recurring basis. In the Tools section, navigate on the left-hand side to Recurring Billing. Here is where you will be able to see your various subscriptions that you have active, expiring, inactive, or credit cards that have expired. To create a new subscription, click on Create a new ARB subscription. This page looks similar to the virtual terminal where you will be able to enter in the credit card or bank account information that you are wanting to charge on a recurring basis. Here you can pick the subscription interval every month, every year, every few days, and the start date and end date of the subscription. You can also set up a trial period here is where you'll enter in your customer billing information and shipping information if applicable. Hitting submit will start this subscription on a recurring basis. This next tool is fraud filters. On the left hand side, navigate to fraud detection suite. Here is where you'll be able to set up various fraud filters to protect your company from fraud. These filters include velocity filters, suspicious transaction filters, and different enhanced verification filters. SwipeSum is happy to help walk you through each of these so that we can make sure your company is set to accept cards in the best way possible. This next tool is the Customer Information Manager, also known as CIM. This tool is used for storing a credit card so that you can run the credit card at a later date. On the left-hand menu in the Tools section, click on Customer Information Manager. You can click on Add Profile to add a new customer and credit card to be saved in your gateway. You can enter their customer ID and email so that you can easily find this customer at a later date. If shipping profile information is different from the company information, please list that at the bottom. The last tool to highlight in this section is the Invoicing tool. 
On the left-hand side of the tools menu, navigate to the bottom to invoicing. Here you'll be able to send an e-invoice via email to your customer. On the right-hand side, click Create Invoice. Here you need to enter the bill to name and email in order to send this invoice to your customer. Feel free to put the invoice number, due date, and description, as well as item information to be included in the invoice. Make sure you have the appropriate total before submitting to the customer. Clicking Allow Partial Payments lets the customer pay a minimum amount before requiring the total due. Hitting send will send an email directly to the customer so they can click to pay their invoice via credit card online. The next section is the reporting section. On the top menu, click on reports. Under transaction detail on the left hand side, you'll be able to search for settled transactions for an individual day. Under report criteria, this is where you'll be able to select settled or unsettled transactions to view during a specified time frame. Click Run Report, and all of the transactions that were settled within that time frame should appear in a simplified report. The next section in the Reports tool that we will highlight is Returns. So you'll be able to select returns by settlement date, batch date, or transaction ID, and specify the time frame for the report that you want to view. Click Run Report, and it should show up with all of the returns that settled within that specified time frame. The final section we are going to highlight is the transaction search menu. Navigate to transaction search on the top menu bar of your screen. In this section, you can search by all settled transactions or a specified settlement date. You can decide to search by a specified credit card number, bank account number, customer name, ID, or transaction ID or invoice number. To search all settled transactions, you must enter another value in a separate field in order to get search results. To search by a customer ID, simply enter the ID under the customer field. And when you search by this, you should get all transaction search results that have happened by that customer in the specified time frame. For questions about authorize.net, you can contact them directly by clicking contact us on the top menu of your screen. You can get live help by chatting with a support representative. If you have any more questions, you can always reach out to us at swipesum.com via chat, phone, or email. Also check out our YouTube channel for more payment related videos.